Hello, my name is Dr. George Machaki and welcome to Retail Merchandising. You're either taking me on an online class, a face-to-face -face class, or you just happen to stumble in on this on the YouTube. Um, what will be, do you have access to the reading material that's provided? You have uh, access to my conceptual maps, and this will be a supplement to the lectures we would have in class, just in case I miss something, or uh, in our forums, uh, an expansion. So it'll be uh, this uh, session here, uh, this lesson, chapter two, we're going to be talking about retailing formats. And when I'm looking at retailing formats is uh, different store sizes. What kind of stores are there? We're going to talk about department stores. We're going to talk about specialty stores, online retailing. We're going to talk about electronic retailing uh, or e-commerce. We're going to be talking about uh, catalog retailing. We're going to talk about what we would consider non-retailing. Uh, could I lease a department? within a, a larger store we're talking a little bit about franchising you should have some basic understanding you ever taken me either for marketing or advertising or uh, some uh, introduction of business class where you've taken it myself or some other instructor at the at the college you should have a found basic foundation about business this is just not going to be looking at retail merchandising so this whole series that will be going or this uh, the class that you signed up either in a face-to-face -face class or in an online class is going to be looking at retail merchandising some of you are uh, uh, business owners and uh, you own a retail uh, shop others are department heads or department managers or looking to become any department managers and you're taking this to have a basic understanding of what does it mean to be in retail merchandising uh, others are uh, in the fashion industry or in a fashion uh, degree uh, of our program and what you're going to do you've come up with you're the producer that we talked in chapter one you've created a new uh, um, a look new a new uh, uh, outfit new materials new uh, uh, for lack of better words uh, a clothing line or, uh, so now how do I take this and be able to put it into the distribution channel or I might open up my own shop and I'm a tailor and I'm trying to uh, sell something so it, it covers a multiple uh, area of uh, uh, what we call retail merchandising. It's going to be general. We're going to go all the way from the, like I said, we're going to talk about department stores, specialty stores, uh, hard to classify stores. You know, they're kind of in the middle there. I think the uh, the author that you were uh, that you're reading uh, uh, looked at Nemus Markets as kind of a uh, uh, hard to classify type of discounters. What are discounters? Uh, you know, what I mean, uh, uh, other retailing formats. I'm going to, you know, you already read the material. This, this so if you're taking me for a class either face-to-face -face or online, you have access to these concept, a con a concept maps or mind map. Open them up. Remember, wherever the pluses are, that means that's only the first level. Most of you will have two levels. I go to the second level, and then I want you to put your own word. So read the material. Look, you know, read the book. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, look at my concept maps. Open them up first. They're in a PDF file, usually one page or two page printable. When you read the material, put your notes in. And now, when you're listening to this lecture, I will go through all the different levels within my mind maps. So if you miss something, say, oh yeah, I didn't get that. How did I miss that? Go back and look. But this way you'll know, are you going to be an effective note taker? Do you understand? You know, the whole thing of reading it, uh, the material or the book, and the book is very easy reading. Uh, I, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, you have access to the a student's PowerPoint, if not the, these mind maps are your PowerPoints, just a different way of looking at it. So this whole chapter, as you as you see here, has a lot of information. Remember, you're not going to be an expert, but you'll have a good baseline, a good understanding. What does it mean to be in retail merchandising? And retail merchandising, from this perspective or from everything else here, will be more in the clothing line. That's something that everyone could relate to, and it ties in well with uh, 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 fashion program at the college that uh, you're attending right now all right so let's look so we're going to go in here and, and like i said i'm going to open this up and remember you can always slow me down speed me up hopefully uh, don't turn me off okay and remember uh, retail merchandising this course here is part of the marketing certificate or part of the marketing degree so you might have already had some advertising I just finished a, a course in advertising online, or you uh, might have uh, uh, had some classes in marketing. You know, marketing is integrated uh, marketing communication. So, so now, how I'm going to take what I've learned and actually take something coming back out of the college, and I have a marketing degree or I have a fashion degree, 
and I'm going to be a retail merchandiser, or I am a manager, or I'm an entrepreneur, open up a shop. How do I set up my shop? How do I, what kind of stores are out there? It's always nice to know what stores is there opportunity for me to be employed. Which store do I want? Do I want a large department store? Do I want to work for a specialty store? All this, there's a lot of different avenues you could go through in retail merchandising. Most of us starting off, uh, start off our first job as in some kind of retail merchandising. Now you'll be able to understand. And if you finish the, when you finish this course, you have a good basic understanding whether you're going to open up your own store, or you'll be a manager, or a department head, and how does this work? How does this, uh, the pieces fit together? So, uh, the author had some websites, you know, uh, like I said, it's easy reading. The author is very easy reading, uh, very intuitive, very up-to-date, and I'll try to uh, add on to what you've already read and cover the same information or you know in my own words so this way you'll read the book and you have an uh, understanding how uh, uh, he presents it and then you're going to look at me explaining in my own words and using the concept master now i understand that there's only chapter two out of, i think out of 16 or 17 chapters okay so let's look at some web store magazine and i've provided this web to, uh, this uh, this site to you earlier in the overview for this course and in chapter one so we're going to go on here and I'll open this up. You know, reports give sales volume, profitability, large retail stores uh, for the last two years, bearing on relative store sites. You should understand, if I'm a small specialty shop, how and what a larger department store, another specialty shop operates, it gives me good information what I could do to change or what I should do to mirror. You know, so my customers, you know, if they're already used to this kind of a format or coming to this kind of uh, store, uh, I should at least be close enough and then show them the added value you have coming to my store, whether it's a department store, larger, or whether it's a franchise or a specialty store, or I'm a discounter. It doesn't make a difference. Remember, I have a, a, a quick overview. So I'm going to click on this chart reel here. And I wanted you to do it because you're going to do, remember, you're going to be doing a... Uh, a feasibility uh, a project for me you're going to be opening up a retail merchandising store or you're going to be working or you're working in a retail merchandise store and you're going to come up with some kind of a uh, uh, action plan to improve a department or to improve the whole uh, your merchandising uh, 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 uh so you would be able to utilize this and improve customer satisfaction and most of all increase profitability and bring more customers so you could expand your uh, uh, your, your store depending on which format you're uh, working in and sometimes you may be in this form and say hey man this format works well but i think we should go into uh, uh, utilize another format i just read about okay so now i'm going to open this up real quickly and we're going to look at uh, sales volume and i think in here there we go Remember the sites out there, always list the sites. If you're using a, we're using a course blackboard management system, I uh, always provide the links. The author has uh, the, the sites in there. He basically has the sites as www. Remember, you always have to, uh, because of technology, you have to have the HTTP uh, P without the S. S means it's secured. And then, you know, uh, semicolon and, and uh, backslashes, and then www for, uh, for, for the sites to work uh, adequately. So I'm looking at this, where the heck was going on, news, advocate, uh, let's say news, so I'm looking at economy, different, you know, uh, uh, marketing, merchandising is what we're looking at, uh, advocacy, resource planning, you know, and we'll talk about the four or five calendar, you know, this, uh, it's broken up in different months uh, for uh, merchandising, that's when you get your materials, and we'll get into that a little bit uh, later, uh, let's see, annual retail listing, okay, so let's look at this, uh, I think that's the one I wanted, okay. So it's going to come in here, top uh, retailers. It's nice to know what are our top retailers. Uh, you know, and then also different sites. You know, so you look at the top one. And for 2014, which are the Amazon is number one. You know, and we're going to talk about that in e-commerce uh, 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 going on there. So you have that. I wanted to get here the economy. Uh, Store operations, supply chain, technology. What I'm going to say, you can look at this in here. And there was one thing in here that I was looking at is the size of the store per sales volume. So let's see, annual retails list, retail for buying guide. Da, da, da. And, you know, and, and you'll find that, all right? It, it's in here. 
but I'll let this go so otherwise I'll be here for uh, for two hours instead of one hour okay I just want you to make sure here's the uh, resize uh, re uh, the site utilize it and then look at the homework that's assigned um, either in class or in uh, blackboard if you're taking me for an online class okay so I'll just turn this one off okay so we're out of here and it says give retail for the last two years uh, sales volume uh, just a section in there just uh, you have to play around with it okay I'm going really quickly here so that's the site I wanted to, my, my whole thing is basically to get you into the site and part of this thing is if you see the sales volume of larger stores and you can see the sales volume of a smaller store especially store this way it gives you a good handle what my sales volume should be for a similar type of merchandising uh, that I uh, would carry and how would I lay out if my numbers aren't there how do I adjust that okay so let's know what a department store is. Okay, I'm going to just turn these off. I just want to talk about them. When I'm looking at department store, okay, now another thing. If you notice these are uh, light blue. When you have my concept maps, you don't see the different colors. The rationale for this is if you're online or watch the video, wherever I have the light blue, I want you to pay special attention. You may see this on an exam. You may not. But I want you to focus. Major cities, you know, how did department stores start? They started major cities in the 19th century. Not 18th century, 19th century uh, selling dry goods. And it kind of makes sense. Right? And they had a refrigerator, you know, like a uh, 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 feed for animals and everything else. Uh, but dry goods. Okay? Anchors, you know, and another concept, a word you should understand. I'm going for vocabulary. You, I'm teaching you a baseline in retail merchandising. So when you're talking to other suppliers or to a buyer, or you're talking to other managers, you're talking the same language. Just like if you would be taking accounting. Accounting is the language of business. If you're taking advertising, you have to know the buzzwords, the keywords, the concept. So this way it gives you credibility and it gives you a good understanding. So since this is re retail merchandising, a retailer store, let's start talking. Anchors. A department stores are usually anchors. Uh, you look at Walmart, Macy's, Nemus Markets, even Home Depot could be an anchor that drives people in. But Home Depot, people are going in to buy hardware stores. So if I would be a retail merchandising, I may have some goods like lighting or something that they may not carry to complement it. But otherwise, I could also have, a, you know, you have like grocery stores uh, in this area here, Domin uh, not Dominic's out, uh, uh, Mariano's or Jewel or, or some other ones or, uh, that will bring people in. Now, uh, later on, we'll be talking about, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, Oop, that popped up, sorry. Okay, so uh, they're anchors in, in, in a mall. That's where it brings in. What you're going to find out, the malls are going down. You know, So now malls are no longer because of uh, what happened, 9-11 or whatever. And, and people just don't like to go into a, a, one area. They like to drive, especially Americans. Our, tradition, our uh, uh, consumer behavior is changing a little bit. So they call them leisure centers now. And they have different names, okay? Now, remember, department stores could be both privately held or public uh, corporations or individual owners all right so it's not only just a, a, a public corporation it could be a variety of different if you've taken uh, any kind of business class you'll know the different type of you know sole proprietor partnership corporation limited just different you know s corporations just so you get, have a basic understanding and, uh, i assume you had some business class or some marketing classes you've already been exposed to this and you know decline in recent years especially stores that have become more competitors instead of you you know, uh, the anchor stores bring them in, and then everyone will go to department stores. You still have them up uh, around the northern areas in Illinois. I have Woodfield Mall, or I have Gurney Mill. Woodfield Mall is in uh, 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 Cook County, and Gurney, uh, uh, Gurney Mills, another the big uh, uh, mall, for lack of better words, uh, outlet stores. Uh, 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 they have anchor stores like J.C. Penney's or Macy's that bring people into that area, and then all the little shops, specialty shops. Uh, survive off of them. I mean, you know, they buy at the, uh, anch uh, at, at the anchor store, the big department stores, but that's what draws them there. It's an anchor. This is the hub. And then all the other stores uh, surround around them. Okay? And, you know, uh, Macy Street. Uh, and if I look at Chicago Street, you know, here's a pick of Macy's. You know, Macy's, you go, all Macy's all look kind of the same because it gives you the image. You got the big star. Okay, and here's a pick inside just the last uh, few remaining apartment stores, the big imperiums inside where you have a big space. Now, remember, all this space here 
all of the small specialty shops this is very good attractive very attractive brings people in wow look at the the ceiling look at all this but all that space someone has to pay for the heating air conditioning so your rent offsets it that's why you're going to see more of a leisure center or uh, not mall types but uh, 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 communities or not uh, shopping centers for like a better word they don't like to call it shopping centers it doesn't sound very um, uh, up in scale so they call them leisure center you come in there you park your car you can walk around and you see more stores going this way you could go specifically and it reduces the cost the overall the cost that you're not paying for it. that's why there's some of the uh, a downside but this is a good attraction when you're looking for a tourist attraction people coming in this is perfect okay so I have that and then again what I want you to always encourage I always you know, uh, the star so remember that's the logo we're going to talk about logo your store have a logo uh, you know uh, where you're uh, merchandising if it's a larger chain will have some kind of logo that logo helps you what I want you to do in this course in this class when we talk about Macy's or we talk about uh, Nemus Market or whatever stores we're going to bring up always go to the link so I'm going to click on the link here to Macy's it should work okay and why now you can see what's macy selling you know there's the gift guides deals and promotion look at the website it's part of retail even a small specialty shop should have some kind of a website i mean if you don't you got a business i can tell you that uh, people expect that they want to know the hours they want to lay out they want a lot of information so if i'm looking at macy they carry a lot of stuff they carry outdoor you know seasonal to have basically suits and everything else. and you can look at the trend those are my in my fashion um uh, program they're taking uh, retail merchandising i think it's a required course look at the different trends you know suits are back nice white white shirts you know what i mean the dresses you know different shoes uh, you look at diversity get back it may see very uh, you know trying to be diversified look at and look at the model the models and everything else when you're looking at merchandising or you're going to have um uh, mannequins and we'll talk about different ways different ways of hanging the goods different way of uh, 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 uh showing the goods in other chapters what you're looking at is what what's selling what merchandise is going what is trendy what's a a, a, a fad for a ba uh, better words and what's a, a, a classic that keeps on coming on so you know american idols they have a lot of information wedding shop you know this guy doesn't look happy at all this guy's happy i fit into the suit i'm just kidding i'm an advertiser remember and maybe that's the look maybe a lot of who's my target audience different types of shoes you remember uh, uh men's driving shoes uh blue uh you know the color is part of it if i look at a gym shoe you know what's the fashion so you have a lot of things in Macy is the high end and it's uh, it's a good indicator okay so uh, uh, what are they doing okay so I'll close that off okay so remember always look at the sites and always have the links provided and like I said the author only has here so sometimes the links may not go it says the links disconnected always put the HTTP uh, colon uh, two backslashes on there in department stores or in retail merchandising we talk about different things we talk about breadth and depth okay so what is breadth read it again i got it in blue unique items and selection of merchandise how many sizes do i have how many different colors i have you know and then they go back into broad and uh, wide and broad extensive selection i have every size is everything in, uh, uh, that you could dream of or i have minimal size i'm especially sure store i may only have a few uh, sizes because I kind of have an idea, but I have others, you know, I may have one size of everything you should always have, but I have a majority of sizes I think most of my clients that are coming in are going to be, uh, uh, that are going to be requesting. I have the majority of the color, but if I don't have the color, they're going to walk out, they're going to go to my competitor. So it depends, you know, uh, and it depends on your store, it depends on your merchandising, you know, you know what I mean? So the buyer and the seller is, has to get together and come up what's going to be our breadth how wide and how broad it's going to be now a narrow breadth limited selections i have very limited in this color i have only this color one or two uh, sizes that's it because purple may not be selling purple may be selling more around easter and i'm just making that you know what i mean or purple may be selling depending on the cultural uh, value where i'm open certain cultures like purple other uh, people may not like that so you have to understand that you know your merchandising retail merchandise what you're carrying has to be i want to say broad enough to bring people in just in case they're traveling but narrow enough for the target or local market that's going to come there because you don't want to get stuck with inventory you know then we'll talk later on on clearance and what you do with the inventory now the other one is uh, debt uh, depth 
assortment within the sec a selection. So remember, so you got broad, how many different, different pro you know, if I'm looking at, if you've taken me for marketing, look at the uh, product mix and product lines. So if I'm looking at a depth assortment within the selection, so I got my product mix, this would be a whole bunch of different uh, uh, products that complement each other. Remember, Macy, what complements each other? I wouldn't expect to see a car in Macy's unless they're giving it as, as a grand price, as a promotional, to bring people in. What complements? product and how much do I carry now the depth is the assortment within the selection within one product line and I'm trying to bring you know because we're utilizing what the author is doing and some of you this may be the first time you ever heard it others you're trying to connect with other classes you've taken in marketing or advertising or business when we talk about product line and product mix so you can say, oh, now I understand it it's just a different variation or different wording that means a little different to a retail merchandiser versus than a general business person okay so now if I'm looking at that extensive assortment again within their product line and then shallow means limited so one's shallow one's depth all right so but you'll see these words that the depth and uh, breadth and it's very common usage within the retail merchandise remember I want you to start picking up the vocabulary as you pick up the vocabulary when you're going for the job interview when you're talking to buyers and and sellers and they're talking debt and, uh, and and you know narrow or shallow you already know what they're talking about what did they call me shallow no remember, you're learning you're learning a baseline a new language that retail merchandisers understand and now I'm coming from the fashion industry I want to come in I want them to sell my shirts my ties what land i guess if i start speaking in the same vocabulary to say this person understand retail merchandising or i'm hiring or i'm going talking to some another store or anything else i understand what they're talking about okay they talked about the gap referred to as a narrow and and deep remember gap just their clothing line is very narrow very specific just clothing just gap clothing but very deep has all the things you got t-shirts underwear everything to do with when i walk out of the gap i could be a gap person okay and i'm picking one or the other i'm gonna put the link on here because we're going to talk about the gap down the road i just wanted to make sure so if you get a question you know uh, what kind of uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, uh, breadth and depth does the gap have? Okay. Now Walmart broad selection material. Remember a start, but the assortment is shallow. Walmart has broad. Remember when I'm talking about broad right here? Let me just say these up here. Broad, extensive select. They have a lot of stuff. You a lot of store special uh, these stores. Let's just look at the office equipment or or clothing line. They have a very. They have all different kinds, different. Uh, um, from different uh, uh, makers, different types. They have, but they have a very limited or very uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, shallow. They don't carry all different sizes. They don't carry too many different varieties. They have everything in there because they're a one-stop store. Whether later on we're going to go into superstores, and that's what Walmart and Targets are going to the superstore. You know, that's basically tied in with groceries and clothing and auto, whatever you want. You can come in the store, a uh, one-shop store. Those have, uh, work very well, uh, uh, e even here in the urban, but more if you look in the rural areas when they drive a long distance. Those are very prosperous in that area they're, they're doing pretty good because when the individual comes there you know the town's there they got a big superstore they could do all their shopping everything you can get a wedding dress in there almost used to be like the old sears catalog i'm old but not that old all right so we got the breath that okay so I've got, i'll leave this out here okay and i'll leave the that okay now soft lines now if i'm looking soft lines is apparel and household textile products so when they talk about what's your merchandising um, uh, mix and you're going to say, well, I have a soft line. I don't carry any hard lines. And there's a false line, apparel, and household textures. And if I look at Kohl's, uh, a clothing store, they'd be considered more of a, you know, kind of a department store, a specialty store, for lack of better words. But they carry mostly soft line, and they carry a household and textile uh, uh, goods and services. Okay? Uh, products. Okay, now hardliners is non textical pro uh, product, so they're not carrying anything out. They're carrying more furniture and household goods. Remember, they all complement. I get the furniture, but I need some place to go on a nice dining table. Or your, your retail merchandising mix, mixture. Remember, you're the manager, you're the owner, 
you had to come up, your department, different department, which one's complimented, how do I line them up? You know, usually when I got the clothing, I got the suits and everything else, I got the shoe store, there's the shoes, the, the shoes right there, different things to go on. I got the ties, I got the shirt, that all, I got the watches, I got the jewelry in the, in the department store, because it makes sense, it all complements each other. But in which way? Where are they going to come in? We'll, we'll get into the future chat. Uh, cha I just want you to understand basic uh, 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 vocabulary in here. And remember, always save these concept maps because when you're going to have the exams, they're nice to review. Use your every, uh, all the information. When you're in my lecture or in a format or looking at this, circle those areas I've talked. If not, put them in. Go back in the book. How did I miss that? Now you know when you're reading how to take notes. Remember, I'm giving you a first template. Uh, I'm giving you like a skeleton, a rough outline for the first level. And now you put on the, the substance to your thing with your own words. The more you write, the more you read, the more you see, the more you even say it, you have a better chance of retaining it and utilizing when you need it. And now you have to understand how all the pieces fit. So it, it makes a big difference what type of a, a form or retail uh, store or format that you're operating within. And once you're operating, you say, man, I see that. That's exactly what the author is doing. Exactly what Dr. George is teaching us, okay? Now, what are specialty stores? And they use the thing that lids. If you look at lids, it's more of a, um, uh, 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 here, uh, uh, I want to say, uh, athletic store. Let me just go on here. All right? So here's their uh, site. Okay, what do they have? They have the Blackhawks, right? Those are you in Chicago. Blackhawks won, you know, uh, uh, you know three times, uh, three uh, 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 times uh, within a six-year period, which is excellent. You know, they say they want to break it for four. Uh, you never know. They're doing pretty good, all right, as long as they don't get overconfident. So they have everything on there, you know, locker room, lids. And lids are basically hats, all different types of hats. Kind of makes sense, right? But they carry more than hats. Look at it. They got jerseys, because that makes sense. They've got all the brand names. You name it, and legal brand names, okay? And they have anything about us, Instagram, Twitter. Look at how they communicate. In my account, store locators, outlet stores, right? Uh, uh, equipment closeout. So they have a variety of different things they have. You know, they get all the different. Are you in uh, uh, Major League Baseball, NFL football, uh, uh, National ba uh, Basketball League, uh, 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 National uh, Hockey League, you know, college sport. Everything you want so you can find a hat. Go in the store. Oh, this guy's a, a, a Hawk fan. I, I think the Hawks, Black Hawks, psh, they got it. They're doing pretty good, okay? And they got different accessories, backpacks, caps. So, so remember, this is, when I look at retail merchandising and I look at lids over here, look at a small store, have it in there. Do they have everything in the store when you walk in? Maybe not everything, but they could get it. They got it online. They say, hey, if we don't have it in here, we have another way. But they may have a very narrow or uh, a selection here just to show you we could order it we'll get it to you in the next day or you can leave right away but they understand the merchandising mix what they're doing they understand how to lay it out look they got the sunglasses here it's probably summertime and how to get your attention coming in even if they didn't know what the store was about this might bring them oh, I like these glasses let's see what else they have in the window here all right and you got all these different hats so you're going to come in all right so you have that when a single category merchandise that's all they carry but they have remember a category of merchandise that could be sports and they're basically looking at all the uh, uh, big league um, uh, national league uh, and even college uh, uh, organizations that they carry okay so remember they have as a specialty store so let me just close this so we could see this they have a limited breadth okay when we come back in here, right? We already talked about the definitions of a breadth. What's a breadth? A unique selection of merchandise. So they are more of a narrow. Makes sense. Uh, such as casual apparel or footwear. These are just different ones. Not only lids. Narrow defined group of customers. When I'm looking at specialty stores, this in blue. When I look at demographic, they're not looking at the income level or anything else. They're looking at different gender. Who wears more sad? Men and women. Women are usually more baseball hats also. The guys are wearing it. We're a nice, lovely couple. But majority. What's the gender? What's the age? What's the average age? for? If you look at the lids, you can find that out. What lifestyle segment? You know, Ann Taylor, Hoyser, and uh, Pottery Blind are all considered specialty stores. Just a lot of these are just the general information. So you can say, now I understand it. Hit clothing and everything else and, and uh, 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 soft line goods. Okay? Now, hard to classify stores. So remember, these are larger. 
These are smaller in operation, hard to classify stores, Nemus Markets. Too large to be a specialty store, they're large, too small to be the department store. Okay? So and here's the pick, and again, Nemus Market's got a nice butterfly friendly. Okay, and here's the picture. Remember Nemus Market? This is what they look like, you know, trying to look more upscale and yeah you know look look at this it looks almost like a, a, a like a Hyatt hotel i'm not trying to sell one but it, it gives you that hmm, this is a completely different uh, atmosphere than if i would have went and even Mar uh, 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 macy's has the atmosphere but this one has the the royalty for lack of better words no cement nice uh thing uh, uh in here uh, uh we call it uh, stairs okay so let's go on Nemus Marcus. Again, if I look at Nemus Market, remember they're, they're a specialty, but they're too large to be a considered specialty, but too small to be considered a department store. And again, a lot of clothing line. Look, they have different clothing line. They got designers, all the designers, those in fashion. What are the designers? Some of you already go to some of these stores. You know, uh, if you're college students, women apparel, swimming jackets, all this take looks in modern relax uh you know sweaters jumpsuits to carry you know they have shoes all the remember news markers connects complements each other everything else works well let me just make the camera a little bit better here okay what are the trends let's see what the, you know so i'm going in here beauty where the heck was i yeah da, 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 home tone beauty men's they have a men's store news markets all the top line you want to impress somebody but it's not cheap it's a it's a, a, a it's a higher end now they're going to be looking at a, a certain lifestyle a certain type of individual you may want to open up something a specialty store not that large but who are you gonna go you may not be able to do men uh, and women because you may not uh, have the space uh, so which one do you want to be are you going to be looking at uh, so this is a good way to look at them and say hey what's out there okay look at the uh, 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 designers okay you know sales all right remember they're looking at banners if you're taking me for advertising you know what the banner is you finish this class okay you have everything else here again look who they're targeting teenagers younger group they have uh, uh bags they've got jewelry to go in here they still got the gym shoes the style it gives you an idea of what's out there i'm coming up I got a Nemus Market, maybe my uh, my destination store, or you know, kind of an anchor. Remember, they're in the middle there. Uh, so if you're gonna you're gonna come in there, what could I do to complement outside that Nemus Markets may not uh, carry, or do I do the extremes? Okay, so we take and carry that. Let's look at discounters. First of all, let's look what discount stores are. Discounting. What's discounting? If I look at a discount store, this kind of, I want to say looks like Target, but I, uh, I'm not really, uh, it may be, I can't focus in. It may be Target in here in the picture, I'm not sure. But what's a discount store? A discount store, one way we're purchased, other than a department store, if I go to uh, Macy's or uh, even Nemus Market, I can buy, if I'm in the uh, men's suit area, I'm coming in there, and also the department store because I could pay right at the cash register there in that department. I could go to the perfume. I could go to the cosmetic. I just finished with a client looking at cosmetics uh, or, 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 or uh, 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 how to set up their merchandising. So I could go to the cosmetic section and I could pay right there. A discounter, you all come out to the main aisle. You buy your clothes, even TJ Maxx, we'll talk about it in the, in the reading. You're going to come in there and you check out. So you can't buy it there. Maybe once in a while you could buy like jewelry or something because they don't want people to rip them off on the way out. But most discounter stores, you come out to the main aisle and that's where you're uh, central. You pay out that way. It's just an indicator. So you just say, are we a discounter? By vocabulary and definition, you would be considered that. Okay. Customers' purchases are processed at a central checkout called the front end. Remember, make sure I didn't highlight it, the front end. So I'm looking at the front end. So if you get a question on the front end, what the heck is the front end? I'm up here. Let me just close this and I want to just minimize this. Okay. So you see more front end. I forgot to do that. Uh, offer low prices because they obtain goods at a low cost. Try to ma minimize the operating uh, uh, cost. Remember, the whole thing of the, instead of having a cashier there, I have to amend it. I have it in the front. I can minimize my overhead. I can minimize my operating cost. If I uh, minimize my operating cost, I have a higher return on my profit. I'm a double major, management and marketing. And you still have to, how do I keep the, uh, the money? 
after I paid all my expenses. I got to minimize it. I got to start thinking effectively, efficiently. But I got to think what's going to, what, what the customers are going to feel, how they're going to, uh, what kind of experience they're going to have within my uh, in my store, and what kind of uh, merchandising. You know, again, is it going to be? Uh, we're looking at uh, uh, depth and breadth. Keep those concepts because it's going to follow through the whole uh, uh, semester as we're going. Okay, so you got a full line discounter. Now they talk about category killers. If I look at discounters that offer deep assess assortments, you know, of a single category merchandise, are hard line specialists. So uh, pay less. Again, category killer. I could go any store. I can't beat Payless because they got all kinds of shoes. You name it, from rich, yeah, uh, different styles. They may not be the high end, but they have a large, uh, uh, what do you call it, um, uh, assortment of goods. Okay, and here's a pick of uh, uh, Payless. Very clean. They got more behind there, but they just have what they have out there. And then again, you could go into the website. I'm, I'm just trying to get in there. The other one I like using is Toys R Us. They're a killer category. There's a lot of Walmart. Remember. They have a lot of assortment, but they have few selections. Unless, if I'm looking for a Polish, and that's kind of easy. Let's see if I'm looking for uh, for for a uh, a, a uh, doll for one of my uh, grandkids and uh, or a friend of mine, and he's a person of color, or African American or Hispanic. Walmart may not may have one or two, but not a lot. You go to uh, a category uh, killer like a, a Toys R Us, they'll have every uh, nationality you want. If anything else, you can find them online. Walmart only carries what's selling for the local market, and if it's not selling, it's in the clearance uh, aisle. Remember, it's the largest department store. We're a discounter here. And again, you could click on there and see their things. Uh, Barnes and Noble or Staples also uh, are classified as, um, uh, for lack of better words, uh, destination stores. If I look at destination stores, they may not be an anchor store, but it's a store that I'm going to go. If I want to get a good book, where could I find a, a good book? I could go to the library. I could go to a lot of department stores. They have a little book section, Walmart, very limited selection. I will go to Barnes and Noble or a stable. Let's say Barnes and Noble. And I could go strictly and I could find any kind of book I want. Most likely they'll order it, they'll have it. Or if I'm looking for office supplies. Walmart carries office supplies, very limited. One color pencil. You know, staples cannot compete with them on the uh, items they're carrying because they buy by such a uh, uh, large volume. But a lot of uh, business owners, small or large, will go to staples because they have a larger selection. Okay? And again, what was that again? They have a larger debt, right? Extensive assortment went in the selection. Does you see these two? I want to keep on coming back. By the time you learn that, you'll understand between breadth, you know, uh, uh, I'll leave that one extensive, and depth. Remember, this is a lot of a, a, a lot of select, a lot of assortments, uh, a selection of merchandising, and this one is very uh, uh, assortment depth of uh, winning the selection. All right, so we have that doing pretty good. Okay. Off price discounters, TJ Maxx. And what, how does they could keep their prices? I go to TJ Maxx, sometimes, you know, shirts and everything else. You know, they get manufacturers irregular. It doesn't mean that you have to be careful because now one leg is shorter than the other. You know, it may be that the stitching may be just off a little bit here. Like, you know, people may not notice. Or the button may be, instead of being perfect here, maybe one up or something. Just a little. You know, some people notice, but, you know, it's irregular. It didn't meet their quality control. They may have uh, overruns. They made too much uh, of something. How do I get rid of it? You know, Sam's uh, another one that will buy, for, uh, you know, a warehouse club like that. Or they have a closeout. They're going to get rid of it. Or they have canceled orders. People cancel orders and, you know, custom orders. What I do, I'll turn it over to TJ Maxx or stores like that, off-price discount. Or they have returns. I can't sell them new. I, I have too many returns around the holiday. What do I do? I can't have the clearance. It's using inventory. Somebody will come in and say, I'll buy the whole batch. And they'll go to a, an off-price discounter. Uh, close out stores clearance operation eliminates slow selling uh, or end of the season uh, merchandising right it's at the end here's what they're uh, criticized a lot of times close out stores you would think they're working for like um let's say macy's or something else they got a macy's got their own close out store they're criticized for selling manufacturers close out not necessarily were never part of the regular store offering remember 
you see it under Macy's, or, or I'm just using that as an example. There's a lot of there's different ones that have it. So you figure, oh, this was in the store, just in the cell. Now they're selling here. Never made the store. It was just a manufacturer too much, and they were, uh, they made it to uh, to to Macy's or one of the other department stores to a specification. And now I just pick it up, and I have their label or uh, or the brand that I'm utilizing. So, you, you know, that's the only thing they're criticized. People think, oh, I could have brought this. I could have brought this Gucci bag here, but they never carried this brand. It was never there, just that the manufacturer or producer made too many. But it makes you feel like they did. Okay, manufacturers, outlet stores, no frills, break even operation. They're out there, you know, nothing else. You come out, stuff's all over lane. If you find your size, fine. And, and a lot of times they have a lot of goods, remember? If you, and you ask them when the next time they come in, when they get the next shipment, and you can find. You can find a lot of nice clothes if you have those odd sizes that remember just because you, you you think everyone is your size and average some places they have more taller people and that may they may have more stuff you know uh so they'll have a manufacturer's outlet some of the manufacturer outlets i'm, I'm going to talk about gurney mills you're not really getting a deal on there it just says manufacturing outlets all that but the regular retail store just going with that facade that it's a manufacturer outlet when you go to the regular store you're still cheaper than you buy it out like hey what's going on here beware and then now you want to be an ethical retail merchandise but you have to understand your product mix how you're going to lay out the merchandising okay so now you understand the different types of stores or, or formats the stores take and then you have your worm uh, your uh, warehouses you know, and this one here, I'm looking at, uh, you know, if I look at Sam's or Costco's, you could uh, think there's more like Sam's. Costco's got a little neater, for lack of a better word. But what do you have in a warehouse? you got clothes all over. You're looking. I feel for the poor people who have to. If you're working that, you already know what I'm talking about. People go through it. I can't find it. I go there. It's out there. But it's made no frills, no nothing. It's a membership. It's basically designed for small businesses. I have to store small business. Come in two-thirds of my sales, small business. What am I going to do with the other one-third? Consumers, businesses come. I got a certain time. They come in. They buy by these big cards. They go to the businesses. I get the economies of scale. I get a good uh, discount. I get a good price. But the other times the stores are open, I have regular individuals coming in there, and they still weep on some of the uh, 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 the cost of the goods. Uh, hopefully, it's a little less. Remember, uh, Sam's is Walmart. So Target doesn't have one. I think the closest thing to Target, I would look at Costco, just different operations. So uh, Walmart, low cost. Costco is a little bit higher value, a little bit, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Target a little bit better value on, on a lot of the stuff. Same thing with Sam's, low cost, everything else. You get a good uh, deal. Uh, Costco's is similar to Costco, Costco, all right, and Sam's. So they work together. Okay, minimize no frills. And then again, you have the the websites, I'll go in here. If you're in my lecture class, I'll go in here on the forums. You can click on there on your own. And in super centers, we talk combines offering full line discounters and a supermarket under one roof. You know, and here's a store layout. Here's the car care. So I'm going to come in here to get my pharmacies. Pharmacies are usually in the middle. Let's see where they're ahead. Uh, fitting rooms, ladies. This one doesn't have a pharmacy. You know, they got the tires, you got the shoes, infant. And look how they come in. You come in, oh, here's pharmacies right here. Most of you see a lot of layouts. People come in to get the pharmacies, targets like that, real quickly out. Most of them will put the pharmacy in the center. So when you're coming in here, everyone comes to the pharmacy, and that's where it's the hub. Or if you have your electronics in the hub. Where do you have the, most of the people that you want them to go to? Where do you want the pulse of the store to be so you come in here and you have a destination car car heart you have everything else and over here you could have household you know candy and you know yogurt milk and everything else they're usually split one door here one door here one stop shopping super uh, 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 super centers and walmart I, I listed them on there okay and just uh, for information the three top discounters walmart Target and Kmart. Even though Kmart's having a little uh, uh, difficulty uh, coming back up, they're in the slump. They, you know, they, they merge with Sears, another department store. Well, let's see what happens. All right, but these are the largest ones at the author. So if you ever get a question, you know, not Home Depot, they don't feel uh, fit into discounting. Okay. Not saying that they may not be anchor stores. They're more of a destination store. Okay, other retailing. You talk about duty shops. And destination stores. So let's go on this one, duty stop. If I look at duty shop, most of you who travel, if you travel duty free, especially travel overseas, you don't pay any uh, taxes. You know, they're in the national airport. And then, you know, if I click on the site, eh, just click on, I got a few minutes here. And it's done. Okay, site's not going. 
it's okay i'll just turn it off you uh, look at the destination store considered customers drawing power people come in a unique extensive merchandise assortment again like a sports authority it's a destination i'm going in there i have a mission i have to go in there Dave's Bridal, you know, pick, what, what do they have? And this is kind of nice. And here's Dave's Bridal, again, nice, uh, open, not too much of a display. And there's sites, when you look in and you see different dresses and everything else. What compliments Bridal? I need jewelry. So Jared's jewelry would be a nice compliment to it. And there's a big Jared, and you see a lot of commercial. So those are destination stores. I have my dress. Oh, by the way, uh, I've got engaged, so I'll probably come here first. And then, so I'm here, and then, so let's, since I got my wedding ring or my engagement ring, let's look at the day's bridal. You may not buy there, but you have to see what kind of line they're looking, what kind of line they're they're making. If you look at the college I'm teaching, they have a... Um, uh, a, a store, retail store right on campus from the fashion, um, I forgot the name of it, uh, I apologize, from, uh, from the fashion uh, uh, department, uh, fashion uh, program, and you have a bridal dress, what kind of bridal dress is, uh, is out there for the uh, clientele, the college students that I'm trying to attract to, and a lot of them are uh, handmade, so you could kind of get a, a good idea, is it going to be big fluffy dress, is it going to be narrow, is it going to be white, is it going to be uh, off-white, is it going to be egg, because it's different uh, egg color, uh, eggshell, are there different colors, you, you know what I mean, not everyone wants white, there's different, there's, you know, it's going to be short, all that is at least gives you a general idea, what's their mix, when I go to uh, the, the Dave Bridal's website, you could see everything else they sell, they do sell jewelry, they do sell, uh, everything else to complement what their main uh, uh, product is okay so they would be considered a destination store okay what do we have now franchise i'm gonna go real quickly and they uh, the author uses uh, radio shack radio shack's having some uh, uh, uh you know they're going through a, a chapter uh, uh what do you call it bankruptcy chapter 13 some stores survived some didn't what happened radio shack used to be for the the techie guys making their own equipment making their own computers you could buy any kind of circuit board anything at radio shack what happened that market went out because of mass production computers everything else and online you could buy it so they couldn't find that niche they tried to be uh, like a like a, a cell phone they didn't work that they tried to be computers they didn't find that mix the retail merchandising they had a lot of stuff but very narrow, very shallow, little of everything. They didn't specialize in anything, you know what I mean? But they're a franchise. Uh, another franchise, if you look at franchise, we'd always go, most common franchise, fast food. You got McDonald's, everything. Remember, a franchise has two types of type of an ownership. It could be the corporate that owns McDonald's, Ronald McDonald's, the corporate has their own stores, and they have franchisees that, uh, uh, between the franchisor, employer, and the franchisee, employee, uh, gives the franchisee, the employee, Employer gives them, empowers them, or gives them the right to sell the franchisor's product line or service as long as they meet the, these requirements for a royalty or a fee. They have to uh, follow these specifications. And you see a lot of franchisees, uh, most common food industries, you see some of them coming in in like uh, 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 hair cutting. Okay? It makes sense. So they'll, they'll train you, they'll help you along. It's a brand name out there, and then you just come in there and you, uh, you still can. Uh, uh, arrange the merchandising and how much you know uh, uh, for the depth and the breadth depending on your location and depending how much latitude you have with the contractual agreement you have with the franchise owner. So all I'm going to say on that. All right, it's just one. The other one is Lisa Department. Uh, and Sears did for a while, and then they kind of went away from it. If you went into a store, uh, you went to Sears, you had the Sears brand name, but they were trying to bring people in for destination. So they carried some high-end perfume. Macy's, for lack of better words, will have, all. Uh, if I look at they'll have uh, people uh, will lease a certain maybe cosmetic department. Or so they'll lease just that uh, department to sell that, you know, it doesn't... Uh, uh, actually go against what the, their product line or their product mixes their merchandising but they're just leasing the department to an outside vendor with a brand name and they could uh, work in there and this usually works well in department stores remember because department stores will have this different department may not work well in a small specialty shop you know from another retail to operate as a department within a, uh, the latter store okay now non-retailers and here's one you're looking at, just direct marketing. I just finished talking to somebody when I look at the uh, direct marketing. It's a relationship between customers, uh, between retailers and customers without the use of a retail store. 
Pretty good, right? What does that mean? It, direct marketing has two aspects to it. Direct selling and direct response marketing. So let's look at direct selling. If I look at direct selling, you have the pamper chef. You know, there's a consultant, you know, the different uh, 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 cookware you could uh, you could purchase. You know, they, they could come to your house or you have a catalog now or you have door-to-door -door uh, selling. Uh, some colleges, you try to sell you the nice systems. You know, they use co students say, hey, you want to be a direct marketer? And you're basically doing door-to-door -door selling and, you know, to sell their products and words. Different type of individual. Party plan. Demonstrator presents the products. You know, Mary Kay Cosmetic and Tupperware. Mary Kay and uh, Tupperware are both uh, uh, declining a little bit because people say, I don't need enough Tupperware. I don't need enough cosmetic. Uh, you know, I mean, so they have to reinvent themselves again. You know what I mean? Because you have all these other specialty stores. You have people coming in doing their nails and everything else. And so they also carry cosmetic lines once I have a mender. Or, uh, so uh, it, remember, it's eroding that market that used to be open and have... Uh, so th there's nothing wrong. You, if you're Mary Kay or if you're in a Tupperware and that's your thing, that's another considered non-store uh, uh, non retailers, Make sure you understand your mix, where you're at, and make work well. Okay, but this is it's your retail merchandise. It's just something that, that's available to you. You have a store, and you could also have a uh, 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 direct sound. The other one is direct response marketing, info commercials. People love info commercials. I look at the numbers, you know, they look at the stats, they love them. I can see it there, you know, they socialize it, they're funny, they, they show you only got so much. People like that buying, they don't have to look at it. You know, catalogs is another one, and website. And some stores may have info commercials and also have a regular hard store, but not too many. And we'll talk about that when we look at catalog. Let's go into catalog retailing. We only have a few more left. Okay, catalog retailing, and I'll use LL Beam. Customer retailer operates limited number of storefronts. You see them out there. I like LL Beams, a little high end, but they have a store, a home base that they started off, and then most of their business is through the catalog. I'm not going to go through, the, through this. We're already, I want to keep this underneath an hour. Click on the link and see how they do it. They, you know, so most of this is a catalog. Remember, when you're doing a catalog, if you're taking me for advertising, if you're taking advertising, catalogs are expensive, but they're in a higher paper, higher quality, so you have to make sure you understand. You have a good database. You understand where you're sending the catalog. You know, because if you keep on sending, they look at the pictures, they like it, but they're not buying. That's costing me. That's ineffective. I drop that person off, or 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 try to give a promotion and get him or her to buy. And LL Beam is both for men and women, but if I look at LL Beam, they're mostly more for sports type of uh, uh, clothing, you know, heavier wear. Even though they have the sports jacket for the person on the go, you know, you, know, you go out there nicely dressed, but then you could go to work afterwards, okay? So we, uh, and that's all I'm looking at, LL Beam. Electronic retailing, and here's a pick. If I look, and this one here is, I look at electronic uh, retailing. I, I, I think it was uh, the, the, the the chef out there, so it's electronic retailing. And here I have a little more on info commercial, top 10 info commercials. You could go in there. Let's see which one there. I got a few minutes on this one. Go to my top 10. Not working. It must be disconnected. Yep, yeah, sorry. All right, television shopping channel. People like on that. Interactive television. Now, that has to be fiber active. That's almost like... Um, uh, so I could look at it, talk at it. I could talk. I could step. I could modem. I could do a lot of stuff. It's coming in there. The technology is there. It's just expensive to get the interest infrastructure. It won't work on cable. It has to be fiber optics. In some areas, fiber optics is taking over smaller... Uh, expense uh, I mean smaller wire but if there's any kind of damn very expensive because what they do they shoot fiber optics they shoot uh, laser lights back and forth so they could have just a, on the same wire they could do a, a million uh, uh, different conversations because there's different light uh, uh, colors sending back and forth uh, large uh, office buildings already have fiber optics so if you're uh, set up in a, in a mall or something else new uh, subdivision uh, I mean a new uh, a strip mall or a, a new commercial area already will have fiber optics because it's uh, what people want then you would be able to have uh, television I mean interactive television and then home shopping uh, info commercial television shopping trips on the TV you know you go like you go in the store Peapod has something like that then places the order using a remote or medium and uh, uh, needs fiber optic cable. Oops, belongs over here. Excuse me, I made a mistake. All right, so uh, you've got the, uh, the bolt, okay? So it's uh, home shopping. Okay, last one, and we're almost done. 
Who do you think is the largest one? Amazon, number one. That's where you got Google's coming in. There's other people trying to get Amazon. Now why? Here's Amazon, right? They're out here. I got to pick for Amazon. They sell you anything you want. I like Amazon. Uh, nothing against, you know, Amazon.com uh, is online retailer only. Okay, so what do they have? They have 50 billion annual sales. What you like about Amazon? I could order today. In two days, I have it on my door. I could order on Saturday. I have it on my door by Sunday. They don't care. Two-day delivery. I don't like it. I return it. To, uh, put the, the label on it. Send it back. They don't charge me, especially if there's something wrong. You know, that it wasn't the right size or something else. Not that I order by error, and they'll take it back, and I'm done. Amazon's good. E-commerce. Let's look at e-commerce. That's Amazon. 250, uh, uh, 250 billion annual sales e uh, on e-commerce. You have to have some kind of e-commerce. Just no way around it. Even a small specialty shop. Only so many people are going to come in. People are going to buy. You have people from all over. Once they come in the store and they I like your product. I already know this size fits. Now I could, could I do it on, uh, uh, on the internet? Could I buy on the internet? And, and, but the whole thing is, you're saving maybe. If they're charging me for shipping, i got to return it. That cost added on to the value doesn't make sense. Remember, your retail merchandising should have... Uh, uh, at least some uh, I don't know any retail merchandise and it does not have any kind of uh, internet sales on there so if you're taking me for a class you better have some kind of even if you have the uh, the brick and mortar store you have to have some kind of e-commerce on there okay let me just close these off okay so that's it that takes care of our chapter uh, 2 in retail merchandising uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Remember, just told you, just uh, we just talked about different format of retail stores. You know, uh, you could be working department store, specialty store, how to classify. You may be a discounter, other retail informant. There's so much you could do, and you could. It's not only has to have one. You could have a combination if it makes sense. In one area, I may be a specialty store. The other, uh, someplace else, I may only be because the market bears. I got other kind of competitors. I may be the destination store. I may be a department store. You know, because if you look at a lot of these department stores, they they're smaller. Uh, they're scaling down for certain markets that people don't want to go all the way to the department store. Even Walmart or, uh, or Target has a superstore. Everyone doesn't want a superstore they still like the smaller store and it could be by zoning depending by government regulations or whatever so now you understand and where you're working at where you're shopping at what i want you to, to look at try to identify is that a department store is that a specialty store or is that a hard to classify store and where do i want to work at and where am i working at and what kind of a department or what kind of store what kind of format makes makes sense for my business my merchandising retail merchandising i'm trying to sell i'm trying to you know i'm part of distribution channel we talked uh a uh, 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 chain or marketing uh chain that we talked about um in chapter one all right so again my name is dr george machaki this is retail merchandising chapter two looking at retail formats or different types of retail stores and uh the functionality and what they do okay and i'll see you in chapter three in a little bit thank you very much bye